So this seems to be the week that everyone lost their damn minds when it comes to AI and music. Now, I've been following the space for a while now, and I knew this was coming. I was actually going to make a video about it a couple of months ago. But then there was like this flurry of videos that came out as I was scripting it uh, that were all hot takes on like AI is trash. Um, it's never going to be great at music this week or last week, depending on how long it takes to edit this. Um, everyone suddenly started taking it seriously. My theory is that it might have something to do with the success of the Lenza app, which I'm sure you guys have seen. It's the thing where you take 10 selfies of yourself uploaded and then it spits out these painterly or artistic uh, representations of you. And I'm not sure why, but that seems to be the moment that everybody kind of looked at each other and was like, this is serious. Obviously there's a huge debate happening in the digital art community about how ethical this is. Uh, and it seems like musicians, late to the party as we usually are, uh, are just starting to catch up and saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I've been exploring the AI music space for a while now. Um, I find it endlessly fascinating. Um, it's really interesting to use it as a collaboration tool. So while a lot of the hot takes right now are about how AI is going to you know, destroy musicians, I thought I'd take a minute to make a video on how it can actually help us. Although with the technology and the tools exploding in so many different directions, it was kind of hard to combine them into one video. So I'm just going to do a series of these. And we're going to start with a website called Riff Fusion. Uh, Riff Fusion is AI generated music based off of prompts, kind of like uh, Mid Journey or Dali, but for music. Uh, I first ran across the concept, I want to say earlier this year, I think Gabe Miller did a video about it. Uh, at that point in time, it was fairly complex um, in terms of how you would install and run it. At this point now with Refusion, it is simply a website. You type in down here, what do you want to hear next? Anything that you want. Somebody did lo-fi beat for the holidays. Somebody did church bells. Uh, I wrote Bob Marley kids music uh, just to see what would happen. Uh, and let's check it out. Okay, pretty wild, right? Uh, I mean, I know it's just gibberish lyrics, um, but it sounds like Bob Marley. And indeed, the band sounds like it might be the Wailers. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. So right, not really ready for prime time just quite yet. And it definitely didn't get that kids music part of it. So the way this works is it's based off of a technology called Stable Diffusion, uh, in which the AI is sort of cherry picking the words that you type in to the database of stuff it knows. So someone or some ones at Refusion um, have a extremely large uh, library of maybe MP3s or whatever, all tagged and cataloged. So that when I type in Bob Marley, the AI knows I'm gonna swing down and find my Bob Marley folder, uh, see what I've got inside there and see how I can apply it to other things. So let's try something real quick again, now that we've heard Bob Marley and kids music, and it obviously did not figure out the kids music part of it. Let's try something else. Clearly, it was struggling with EDM tracks sung by Bob Marley, um, probably because they're two very, very different bins. And trying to figure out how to weave that together was probably pretty difficult for the AI. So it's definitely a work in progress. The thing with Stable Diffusion, though, is that as we feed it more and more stuff, um, it's going to categorize and catalog all of that stuff and only get better and better. That said, as soon as I heard Stable Diffusion music, uh, I immediately got some ideas on what you could use it for. For example, one of the, I think, most sampled uh, pianists is a guy named Bill Evans. Um, if you haven't heard Bill Evans' piano stuff, it's 
pretty amazing. Uh, and actually, I honestly think that you have heard Bill Evans music. You just may not know that you've heard Bill Evans music. So he did have a number of albums uh, that were heavy on piano and light on percussion or bass. So it was perfect for sampling um, because you basically had, you know, almost like a solo track to work from. That said, usually if you use a Bill Evans sample, it's pretty quickly identified as a Bill Evans sample. So, you know, use at your own risk. But it got me thinking about Refusion, and I had a pretty good feeling that Bill existed in the Refusion database. So uh, I tried out a few ideas. So one of the things that you'll notice is that um, the AI is kind of thinking and building the track as it goes along. So it kind of hops around a little bit. There is uh, this in the settings here. Um, there is sort of these various ways that you can change the algorithm a bit. So uh, I have, think I found that OG Beat and Agile are two of the more uh, stable ones. Um, and then in this denoising um, tab, this is where things get complex or not complex. I so you do have to play around with it a little bit and kind of let it go through some iterations. Um, Again, uh, playing with the seed image and denoising uh, results in different things. And also, I found that different um, text prompts will give you different results as well. Um, it's not good at soloing things. I did try solo jazz piano, no bass, no drums in the style of Bill Evans, and it still gave me bass and drums. Quality wise, it was really interesting because it definitely had, because of its imperfections, a very nostalgic sort of lo-fi vibe to it what i did was uh you have the option of downloading your sample uh it only gives you five seconds i think it's like an eight bar loop that it gives you or if you're on chrome you can use a plugin called sample uh which is a lifesaver uh and i highly recommend that you pick it up uh which just basically will sample anything that's in your browser you hit record you let it record um you hit stop you stop whatever audio was playing in your browser, you now have here as a WAV file that you can download. Killer. So as I had the WAV file, I brought it over to Ableton and dropped it in. Um, I did have to do a little bit of timing cleanup on it. You can see some uh, warp markers here and it was quantized and this is what we came up with. <music> Uh, from there, I simply right clicked and did a convert harmony to MIDI track. So we now have the MIDI, um, probably in a very cheesy format, but let's give it a listen. Um, from there, all you need to do is simply wipe. It's fun to do. Um, your top notes. And you now have a functioning bass line, uh, which I threw into Massive. Um, and we got this. Uh, and then from there, I just, I think this is a, is this cymatics? I'm not sure. I just threw a drum loop under there for the purposes of illustration here. Uh, and this is what we ended up with. Yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty legit. Um, from there, I was even, I was thinking further and we're going to mute this piano track. Uh, I brought it into a simpler, uh, and now you can actually play your sample as well. And 
lastly, by using this SP404 rack uh, that I got from uh, Low Heat, you can go check out his channel. It's definitely worth a pickup. Um, you know, you've got something that sounds uh, super old school boom bap lo-fi. Um, let's check it out. So yeah, that's a thing we just did in like no time at all. Um, uh, it's interesting, right? Um, we took a sample from a Bill Evans record that doesn't exist, Bill Evans performance that doesn't exist, uh, extracted the MIDI from it, created a bass line with it, and basically made a lo-fi beat out of it in like no time flat. Um, and that is just the sort of unimaginative usage of it. I don't even know what the future holds for this technology as it gets better and better at its database, uh, the quality of that it's outputting and people that are more imaginative and creative than I am um, to use this stuff. So as far as the argument of AI generated music coming in and taking over uh, music, I don't think that that it's there yet. That said, I do feel that we are at a point now where musicians can collaborate with AI and get useful results out of it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, one, if you were coming in from the can I monetize ambient music in 30 days thing, I know that I'm way, way, way behind on the follow-up. Turns out November was a pretty terrible month to try to do a challenge like that. Uh, between Thanksgiving here in the States, uh, I ended up having to do a week-long trip out to Arizona, which was great, uh, but that kind of killed any progress that I was able to make on the project uh, and then I stupidly set release on it for Thanksgiving weekend. So any kind of forward momentum I was building on the project um, just kind of tanked in a turkey coma. And then December rolled around and I have this annual project that I do for a client, um, sort of an end of year thing that's usually pretty big and pretty elaborate. For some reason, I always think that I can do more than just that. I don't know why. Every year I try to find some other project that I'm going to work on at the same time. It's always a miserable fit failure because this one project is pretty all consuming. That said, I am still going to do a wrap up video on the ambient thing. Don't get too excited about it since it did just kind of fizzle, but there are a lot of positives that came out of it. So I do want to highlight those. And we're definitely going to be highlighting some more AI tools coming up here. So if you like this video, please hit subscribe and see you next time. All right.